Welcome to the Kingdom. I'm Chris, and this is Good Enough Gaming. So as with most Custodes models, you have to start off by priming them in some kind of gold. Um, again, you can either use the GW Gold Primer, the Retributor Armor, that can get a little bit pricey. Um, the other thing you can do is prime it in a tan or a light brown, a khaki, something like that, and then use your brush to uh, just paint on some uh, Retributor Armor that way. But either way, once you get that nice gold and it dries off, the next step is to apply the Reichland Flesh Shade. And again, there's two or three different washes you can do with, flesh, with, uh, with gold. I like to use the Reichland Flesh Shade. It gives it a nice, strong, deep gold color. Serapim Sepia works as well, or Agrax Earth Shade can make it look a little bit dirty. Now once you've given plenty of time for that wash to dry, uh, then you can start doing the first dry brush. And you can see on the wing there, you dry brush over most of the flat surfaced areas using some kind of brighter gold. In this case, I use Auric Armor Gold. You could go back and just use the Retributor Armor, but instead I wanted to liven up the, uh, the gold color. So I'm using Auric Armor. And once you've finished with that dry brush, you go back and give a slightly lighter dry brush with Rune Fang Steel, hitting edges, ridges, areas that may maybe protrude a little bit. Um, don't do it too hard or you're, you'll turn the entire thing silver and, and then you kind of have to start all over again. But give it a light dry brushing until you're happy with it, until it looks like a shiny kind of gold. Now with that done, we start working on the details. So I'm using uh, Viejo Black. I find it to be a really nice, strong, solid black that has a good matte finish. So we're gonna put that over all of the areas of the bike that I want, um, obviously, to be black. So that includes the guns in the front, that includes the computer console, and that will also include the giant spear that this guy's carrying with him. Now, even though it's, it's still a pretty solid color with a good, strong pigment, uh, when you're painting it over something as bright as gold, you may have to do two coats. And you'd have to do that even if you're using Citadel's Abaddon Black. So either way, just get uh, used to the fact that when you're painting over metallic, you're probably gonna have to do two coats. Now before moving on to the rest of the bike and the rider, I decided to put the base coat of uh, a nice Cantor Blue or some other navy blue on the tip of the spear so that'll have time to dry and by the time we get back to the spear it'll be ready to go. Alright so this next part here is really important because it's one of the few areas of the model that's actually going to have some color and it's not just going to be some shade of metallic, a silver, a gold, a brass. So you want to make sure you get a nice vibrant color. I'm following the box art just because I have zero creativity. So we're going to paint the plume on top of his head and the cloth that's streaming out behind him using a red. Now I use corn red just because that's what I painted the other models in my collection as. I believe the official GW scheme is Mephiston red, but any red works, it doesn't matter. Once you've got that nice base coat down and it's dried, Next, go over it with some Caraber Crimson. If you use Nuln Oil or Earth Shade, it will darken it quite a bit, whereas this Crimson will keep that really bold red color while still providing the shade that you want. Now, it's gonna take a while for that shade to dry all over the place. And so while I was waiting for that to dry, uh, I get some Lead Belcher and I start painting, um, you know, the rest of the chassis and the mechanics underneath the bike. I've seen this done in black. That works just as well because then it puts more of the focus on the gold and the red. The silver blends in fairly well, um, especially once you put that uh, null oil wash over it like we're going to do in a second. But nice and easy, pick a color that's not going to detract. After you get the undercarriage, you get the exhaust pipes, get the, uh, uh, the little barrel here, or not the barrel, but the, the, the ammo on the guns. And then last of all, you'll paint the actual barrels of the gun at the front. There's enough silver on it that by the time you get painted everything with one coat, you'll go back and do another one. And so after finishing off the handlebars here, just to give them some distinction from the, the console and uh, the rider, you could go back and do the second coat on everything and it'll look great. Now once it's dry, and make sure it's dry, it's a disaster painting wash over semi-wet paint. But once it's dry, you can go back. Um, I used a Nuln Oil because I just wanted to darken it down, but keep it with that silver look. You could give it a slightly rust feel if you want and use some Agrax Earthshade. 
Then, while we're waiting for the, the wash to dry on the silver, we can finally go back to the plumes and the cloth, because now the wash on that's probably going to be dry. So I'm going to highlight with Mephisto and Red because I want that really bold red look. So using the edge of your brush, go over just the highlighted strings and strands on that helmet, as well as the raised edges of the cloth itself. Because I wanted to maintain the corn red as the basic color, this Mephiston red is just going to be the highlight. You could at this point paint over most of the cloth with the Mephiston red and make the corn red your shadow, but I didn't want to do that. I like that kind of duller, a um, little less bold red, so the Mephiston red is just my highlight. Then we go back, once we've done with the, the plumes and the cloth with the um, Mephiston red, we go back with Wild Rider. This is almost an orange, not quite, but it still works as a nice highlight for the plumes. Even more sparing with your highlighting. So again, use the edge of the brush, just get the highest parts, the very tips where the hair curls back forward, the very edges of the cloth here, just to give it that, that pop, as they say, and make it stick out. Now at this point, I noticed while I was painting the red that I forgot to paint the exhaust, and I thought of moving this back when I was doing the rest of the silver, but then the model would have looked totally different and you would have thought I skipped steps and so it's just messy. So just know, I accidentally forgot to do a few elements of the silver when I was painting everything else. So the cabling under the spear, the exhaust uh, plumes, the bar on the handles there where you can see, it's like the suspension. And once I got that done, now I turn back to doing the exhaust itself. So I wanted to, I didn't want it to be one big blob of silver, so I decided to paint this lower area here with a Balthazar gold. It gives it a nice kind of brassy bronze look to it. Now given some time for that bronze to dry a bit before we apply a wash to it, we're now going to turn to the rider and the elements of his, uh, his clothing that aren't that brilliant gold. So his boots, we're going to start with a very dark black. Now normally I like to do leather boots, but since he's got those wraps around his ankles, those are going to be leather, and so I wanted to set the boots off with a different color. So the boots are going to be black, and then Rhinox Hide is one of my really good go-to base colors for leather, especially after you put a brown or a black wash on it and then highlight it up really nice. It looks like a nice worn leather. So two coats on both the black and the brown. And after you get the... Uh, the wraps or the putties or whatever you want to call them around his ankles you'll also then make sure to get the gloves I've seen some people paint the square on that arm as a screen um, I decided not to I just wanted it to be a solid uh, leather so what's happening here is actually a, a recording error on my part that turned out to be something useful so I'll, I'll leave it in there is I I'm actually batch painting six of these bikes here in one sitting. So every time you see my hand disappear, I'm putting away the, the one I finished and grabbing a new one. So initially I was just recording the one to show on the, the video here, and then I turn off the camera and then paint the other five, but I forgot to shut off the camera this time. So I got everything. And truth be told, this is the key to getting your armies painted and done. If you're going for really nice like display quality, you paint one at a time, you take your time. In this case, I'm painting an entire squad and so if I've already got the paint out, it's already wet, I'm already used to painting one, you fly through the rest of them. It actually took me two afternoons, other than the, the base spraying to get the initial gold, two afternoons, because I already had the paint, I had just finished one, the muscle memory was there, and I was able to get the entire squad done two afternoons, painting about three hours per afternoon. So I know this sounds a bit wrong, but the key to getting your army painted and done lower your standard a bit unless you really want every model to look fantastic and then batch paint so with that done now uh, gave some time for the brown to dry now we start doing the first layer of highlight now any lighter brown highlight will work whether it's a um, doom bowl brown morn fang brown gorthor brown just something to, to give it that worn look to it um, for these ones, I decided to use Doom Bowl. Doom Bowl, it gives that kind of orangey worn look to it. Some of it give a more beige worn look to the leather, leather. but at this one I wanted to use the, the orange, so it's Doom Bowl. Then when it comes time to highlight the black, including the boots, uh, I'm just going to go for a Mechanicus Standard Gray. Eschen Gray works if you want a more subtle highlight, but for this I really want the, the highlights to look different because of how bright and shiny this thing is. Any kind of accent needs to stick out. So after highlighting um, the console and the guns, 
I figured I might as well paint the uh, the computer console. Let me turn the. There you go. Now the people can see it. Nice job, buddy. Uh, foul green with Vallejo game color is a perfect, nice screen glow, and it's really bright and it sticks out and it looks really nice. You will have to do two coats over that. Then a quick coat of some kind of beige, brown, tan color on the handle grips. And we're just about done there, at least with the rider. So now we turn our attention to the spear itself. Now before I did any highlighting on the spear, I wanted to paint in the details with the gold. So get a very tiny brush, uh, make sure the paint's pretty wet, and then use the side of the brush or turn the model. You'll see for this part where I'm painting the, the, the haft of the spear or the lance, let the shape of the model help you with the painting. Don't try and use the tip of the brush along a razor edge. Just rest the edge and drag it along. And there you go. Adding a little bit of silver to some of the accents, like the rear uh, weight part of the spear, and also just front of the gold trim. We're going to paint that in as well, just to give the spear, break up all the black. Uh, it, it, it looks too, too uniform like that otherwise. Last step with the silver is to get the buckles on those boots. Just a nice straight line down the middle. Take your time so you don't accidentally paint over the, uh, the leather. But uh, by the time I got to the sixth one, I was pretty much just swiping right down and there it was. Um, there are a few little gems and crystals on this guy. Some on him, some on the bike. Uh, I'm gonna use that Cantor blue, same as the blade. Let him stick out a little bit and then we'll go out with a slightly lighter blue touch on him for a highlight. Um, I'm using a slightly brighter silver iron breaker. Lead belcher was too dark for the eagle here, the aquila on the tip of the bike. So a lead belcher, um, it has to be bright enough to stick out among the gold. So you're gonna, you're gonna wanna use something more. Okay, getting down to the last bit here, painting the tip of the spear. This is a very simple way of doing power armor. Get your mid-tone blue. In this case, I use an Eliotalk blue. Paint it halfway up the blade. Then your lightest blue, in this case, I used uh, either Hoeth or Temple Guard. Either one of those will work. And paint it about halfway up the mid-tone blue. And you do want to get the inside edge there just to give it a little, a little bit of distinction. And then finally, some kind of white. White Scar might be a little too bold, but Ulthuan Gray at just the very tip of that lightest blue, and you get a nice gradual transition done fairly quickly as well. There are ways that get you a much prettier look on the blade, but they're a lot more intensive and take more time. This still gives you a general look that the blade is energized, that the energy is building towards the front, and I mean, it's good enough. We finish up with a couple dabs of the lightest tone blue on the orbs there, and there you have it. A decent looking custodian on a bike that didn't take much time at all, I'd say good enough.